Hi guys, Chad Paris here, bringing you episode five of Aths TV. The Australian Track and Field Championships is well and truly underway, with the juniors setting the tone through some outstanding performances so far. But it's about to go up a notch when our open age athletes take to the spotlight in pursuit of being crowned the Australian champion in their event, along with Olympic and Paralympic berths up for grabs. There's going to be plenty of action at the Sydney Olympic Park Athletic Centre with a star-studded lineup of talented athletes set to strut their stuff on the biggest stage of the domestic season. Make sure to tune into Athletics Australia's channels for all live streaming information. Or even better, grab some tickets and immerse yourself in the atmosphere at the venue. Let's head over to Matty Lynch, who'll take you through some of the event previews. And be sure to catch me, the White Tiger, running at 2.35pm this Saturday afternoon in the men's 100 metre ambulance heats, where I'll be doing my best to take home the national title. Thanks, Chad. Couldn't have said it any better myself. It's been an awesome domestic season for athletics fans here in Australia, but it's the 2021 Australian Track and Field Championships, and this is where the big dogs come out to play. Let's take a look at the hottest events on the program. Well, it's only fitting that we start with the White Tiger himself in the men's ambulance 100 metres. Who could forget his running Canberra this year, despite the illegal wind? Paris charged out of the blocks and never looked back in what was one of the most exciting runs of the night. Another athlete to look out for from the power ranks is James Turner, with the world record holder set to burn around one lap of the track in the men's ambulance 400 metres. Turner will be focusing on the event come Tokyo, so his form is all important in the lead-up. Meanwhile, keep your eyes on Madison Di Rosario in the women's wheelchair 800 metres after she narrowly missed her own world record earlier this season, along with Dion Kenzie, who recently became the first Australian man with cerebral palsy to break the four-minute barrier in the 1500 metres with a new personal best of 3.55. The fastest men in Australia will go to battle over the 100 metres and they'll all be chasing the inform Rowan Browning fresh off his blistering 10.05 at the Queensland Track Classic. A national title will be the icing on a very tasty cake that is Browning's season to date, but he'll have to beat longtime rival Jack Hale, among others, to secure the crown. With the weight of the clock off his shoulders after his recent Tokyo qualifier, Browning should enjoy some free running and will be extremely hard to beat. Hannah Bassig is on a rampage this season and don't expect it to stop in Sydney. With a shiny new personal best of 11.18, Bassig is locked and loaded to launch herself down the straight and land herself the official title of Australia's fastest women. Basic hasn't looked like losing all year, but Ebony Lane is having an outstanding season and will be breathing down Basic's neck. An Olympic qualifier will be a huge bonus for Basic, so keep your eyes on the clock for an 11.15. The men's 800 looms as the Peter Bowles show. It took an almighty effort from New Zealand's Brad Mathis at the recent Vic Milers Club to ruin Bowles' clean sheet for the season, with the 144 man being one of the standouts on the domestic circuit. If Bowl can replicate his 145-23 season's best, he'll likely streak away from the field en route to his second national title in a row. At only 19 years of age and boasting a PB of 146.71, Jack Lunn will be one to watch, along as Luke Matthews, who we know is no stranger to winning the Australian Track and Field Championships. Katrina Bissett has been Australia's premier women's 800-metre runner since breaking the Australian record in 2019, and 2021 appears to be no different. Bissett most recently clocked her second Olympic qualifier in a time of 1.59.12 at the Queensland Track Classic and is a standout amongst the entries. Along with red-hot Claudia Hollingsworth, who at the young age of 15 ran 2.01 in Queensland and finished second behind Lyndon Hall when Hall broke the national 1,000 metre record. The men's 1,500 metres might just be the race of the championships. The stakes are high with a number of men already qualified for Tokyo and a handful more knocking on the door. Stuart McSwain proved to be in rare company on the world stage in 2021 when he broke the Australian record and should take care of business here, along with a chance to practice his preferred racing style. Matt Ramsden, Jai Edwards and Ryan Gregson headline other hopefuls, with Ramsden having a qualifier locked away from earlier this year. Edwards narrowly missed the qualifier in Melbourne recently when running 3.35, with Gregson putting in a much improved performance to run 3.36. Tactics will play a huge role in this one and it's going to be a pleasure to watch. A world record is always on the cards when Jared Clifford's in the field, so keep your eyes on the clock as the champ crosses the line. Australian hurdles is booming right now and leading the charge is Liz Clay. Clay's pieced together the perfect season to date, which is an incredible feat considering the all-star cast assembled at each meet, featuring the likes of Brianna Bean, Michelle Jenica, Celeste Mucci, Hannah Jones and Abby Taddeo. Clay's made a habit out of running sub-13 over the sticks, and her consistency at such a high level makes her the deserved favourite in this event. In the men's race, Nick Huff will be looking to fend off Nick Andrews one final time over the hurdles, with their rivalry producing some of the best finishes of the season. Nicola McDermott has been in rare form this season, and we saw Australian record holder Eleanor Patterson in her season debut at the Queensland Track Classic, but these two high jump stars have made us wait to nationals to watch them go head-to-head. 
The two have pushed each other to new heights in recent years, and their form suggests they're both more than capable of breaking that elusive two-metre barrier in the near future. Brandon Stark's recent clearance of 2.29 in Queensland saw him give that 2.33 Olympic standard a nudge, clipping the bar on all three attempts. His 2.29 leap was a strong indicator that he's in fine form, and he'll be certainly one to watch in the men's high jump, along with 2016 Olympian and reigning national champion Joel Baden. Chris Matrevsky has jumped over 8 metres in his last two outings this season, which makes him the favourite in the men's long jump. Matrevsky's proven to be the in man this season, regularly beating his competition in varying conditions, but he'll have to beat both the Henrys, Smith and Frayne if he is to take home the national title. In the women's discus, Danny Stevens steps into the circle for an incredible 14th national title if she can get across the line, which will make her the most successful athlete ever in a single event at the national championships. She'll also be chasing that Olympic standard again with Matt Denny in the men's discus also looking to throw his way onto the plane to Tokyo. Well, that's all we've got time for today in what is going to be an incredible Australian Athletic Championship for 2021. I'm going to throw it back to the White Tiger to say goodbye. Thanks for that, Lynchy. You've definitely got me pumped up for a big few days of athletics and I can't wait to be a part of it. I'd like to say a quick thanks to athletics fans home and abroad who've tuned into the Aussie Summer of Athletics and the Coles Summer Super Series. Your support has been greatly appreciated and it's fantastic to have our sport back. Well, that's all from me. I'm off to gear up for Saturday once again. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.